Wild sheep have been on the landscape of North America for about the last 750,000 years, after crossing the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia into what is now Alaska during the Pleistocene era. Their adaptations have helped them survive the harsh environment as well as the many predators that they come across. One adaptation is their hair color. Their hair color is much the same color as the environment in which they live. This helps them camouflage into the environment so that predators such as the mountain lion have a harder time seeing them in the first place. Additionally, the color of their pelage or hair helps reflect about 40% of the sun's rays, specifically in the desert bighorn. This helps them keep them cooler in those hot summer months. And unlike domesticated sheep, which produce wool as their hairs, wild sheep produce straight hairs that are hollow inside. And that hollow capability helps to insulate them very much like the double pane windows of our homes. In the summer months, that extra air in there produces a barrier that keeps them cooler. The outside air is hot, their body temperature, and then that's an insulating capability. In the winter months, it does the opposite. That extra hair helps keep them warmer. In colder seasons, they develop a thick coat of outer hair on top of their usual fur. This helps further insulate them. Come springtime and summer, they end up molting or shedding that coat in patches, resorting back to their original coat, which keeps them cooler in the summer months. Another adaptation is their strength. When pursued by predators, their strong muscles can allow them to run up to speeds of 20 miles per hour or slightly more for extended periods of time. When going up cliffs, they can run up to 15 miles an hour and jump gaps of 20 feet. Yet another adaptation is their eyesight. Their keen eyesight allows them to see predators at very far distances, up to a mile away, giving them ample time to get to escape terrain. Additionally, their eyesight allows them to judge distances accurately when jumping to locate footholds quickly on steep mountain cliffs. The horizontal pupil of their eye is very different than that of humans, which is round. This horizontal pupil allows them to see panoramically, giving them a much wider view of vision than animals with round pupils. The eyes are also placed on the side of their head to allow for even more field of view, seen around 280 degrees around them. There's a general rule to where eyes are on animals. Eyes on the side like to hide. These would be the prey animals who need to see predators sneaking up on them. Eyes on the front like to hunt. Having eyes on the front gives a better three-dimensional view, allowing predators to capture prey easier. The wild sheep ram has also adapted for the notorious headbutting collisions that they do every fall during their mating season, which is called the rut. Now the horns themselves are made of keratin. That's the same substance that your fingernails are made out of. The horns can weigh up to 30 pounds and they can run at each other at speeds of up to 20 miles an hour slamming heads with each other, and rarely do they actually chip that keratin sheath. Once in a while, you'll see a nick, but they're adapted to withstand all that impact. Under the keratin horn sheath is a bony core that is honeycombed, allowing it to absorb much of the vibrational impact when colliding with another sheep and reducing concussions. Additionally, the skull itself is built for impacts. Between the brain and the horns, inside the skull is another honeycomb structure which further absorbs these vibrations. The skull bone is also extremely thick to withstand repeated impact with little physical injury. This thick, shock-absorbing skull that is designed for the most extreme head budding can withstand up to 800 pounds of force. Even the hooves of wild sheep have adapted for where they live. Measuring three to three and a half inches long, they're double lobed, which allows them to spread these out or move them closer together. That works really well for the ledges when they're standing on them. Wider ledges, they can spread them out for a bigger surface area, but smaller ledges, they can squeeze together to get on the tiniest, tiniest little ledges. In fact, their hooves can stand on ledges only five centimeters wide. That's only two inches. The hard outside rim of the hoof is used for digging into hard soil or even through the snow in the winter to find food under the hard snow and ice. The bottom of each hoof has soft and spongy parts on the inside bottom, sort of like a tennis shoe, to slightly curve around those rocks for more traction. They're also gritty like sandpaper on the bottom, adding more traction. Lastly, the dew claws are another adaptation. Now they're found right up here 
above the hoof. If the hoof gets on a ledge that has slippery rocks or is wet and they start to slide, that dew claw can dig into the rock, acting as a braking system, allowing for the other three hooves to take traction on other ledges, pulling that foot back on up. The desert bighorn in particular has adapted well for the dry environment in which it lives. Desert bighorn sheep must replace at least 4% of their body weight daily to maintain the water balance during the summer months that they need. That's about 2.4 liters of water a day. But drinking water isn't always available, especially in the summer months. In general, desert bighorn sheep have adapted to go without water physiologically for long periods of time, although they're subject to stress during very hot, arid conditions if adequate water is not available. Buds and vascular tissue of cacti and agaves may provide valuable water supplements during these dry periods, and they have been seen busting open barrel cacti with their horns to retrieve water inside. Most animals are unable to tolerate losing 10% of their body weight in fluid before dehydration occurs, but desert bighorn sheep can lose up to 30% fluid weight and still function. When water is available, which they prefer, they may consume nearly 20% of their body weight in a short period of time. This is quite amazing. This would be the same as a 100 pound human drinking water in the same amount of time. That would be 20 pounds of water that human would have to drink, making that human weigh 120 pounds. Even the wild sheep's digestive system has adapted to help them better absorb nutrients from the plants they eat. Wild sheep are ruminants and have a complex four-part stomach. Much of the tough plants they eat need extra help in breaking down. For example, desert bighorn sheep sometimes eat the tough desert plants of mesquite and cat claw, which are very difficult to break down into nutrients that can be absorbed. Although their stomachs have evolved a very complex process, it can be broken down into a few simple steps. After swallowing the food, it goes into the first two chambers of the stomach, where microbes help break it down. Then the sheep regurgitates the food, which is now called cud, and chews it up again to mix it with saliva and break it into smaller particles. It is swallowed once again and flows into the other two chambers of the stomach where it continues to be broken down into nutrients that can be absorbed. Additionally, this process has another benefit besides breaking food down, as it also enables them to eat large portions of food rapidly while out in the open before retreating to cliffs or ledges where they can thoroughly rechew and digest their food safe from predators. These are a few of the adaptations that have helped wild sheep survive for hundreds of thousands of years in North America. I'm Ryan Brock with the Wild Sheep Foundation. Thanks for watching.